Hello and a warm welcome to the Move Live 52 podcast from your hosts Roland and Galena. I'm Roland and I am a skill-based weight loss coach who lost 110 pounds myself 17 years ago, kept it off ever since, and now I help my clients and readers to do the same. And I'm Galena, I'm a movement specialist and a trauma therapist, supporting people with chronic and persistent pain and recovering from emotional eating. This is your first time with us. Head on over to eatmovelive52.com slash podcast guest. Get your free download and uh, see how you can work with us. And now on to the show. Hi, dear Eat Move Live 52 listeners. We have a very special guest with us today. Here are a few words about Don Timmers a restorative exercise colleague from the Netherlands, who I'm so excited is our guest today. Dan loves being a part of nature and shares this connection by homeschooling her three kids in nature, as well as rewilding others to deepen their nature connection. She offers a wide range of earth skills like ancient crafts, sit spots, games, and stories. With her tribe, she aims for a nomadic lifestyle, roaming the water with their historical sailing boat. She has been practicing and teaching restorative exercise for years and helping people get connection to their bodies. Now she takes people outdoors to experience ancestral movement hands-on. Dan recently was on an incredible adventure and she's here talking to us about it and giving us a glimpse of what it's like to be on a Paleolithic expedition. Have a listen. Hi, and welcome to the Eat, Move, Live 52 podcast. Galena is here, and we have a special, (laughs) special guest, Don Timmers. Hi, Don. Hi, Galena. I'm so excited. I know. We planned this conversation way back in December, Um, But now you're finding yourself with lots of time and probably in one of the most beautiful, quaint, magical sounding places that I could have ever imagined interviewing someone from. Um, So I'm so excited that you're here. I'm just going to say a few words about how I met Dan. I think maybe five or six years ago, we met in the Netherlands, in Kastrikum, where uh, we were together in a training program for natural movement with Katie Bowman. Yeah. Uh, and I remember you as I, I think we, we all were kind of walking distance from the studio where the training was. Um, but like most people would take a car because it was early in the morning and you were camping somewhere in the woods. That's how I remember you. And you were walking like four kilometers every morning and you were foraging some sort of weeds and juicing them and <laughs> drinking them on your way. And I was like, She's the only person, we're all here for natural movement to learn how to, you know, enhance our our modern bodies with what's actually needed. She's the only person who's actually doing it, (laughs) like actually (laughs) doing it. I totally forget about that. I'm like, Like, that's right. I was camping. Yeah, camping? Like here I am in like, you know, I'm staying in Amsterdam in like a modern apartment and I get to put my five finger shoes and come in the morning to Kastrikum and here's Dan who's like, walking from her campsite while foraging and eating what she found on the way with her handmade shoes that's right that's, seriously that's right oh my god <laughs> it, it's so great to hear that i keep forgetting that you know some things become very normal and it's really nice if someone you know um reminds you of did you know you were doing that i was like no i, I forgot about it but yeah. yeah, it was a great time. And it was, what I remember about you was that you were eating dirt in a pill. <laughs> and I was like, eating dirt? Why don't you just There's pick it up? dirt right outside. That, that was, yeah, but there was something special about it. I was really amazed by Galina because you were so um, uh, into health and what was good. And now I understand the dirt part. And I was just, you know, doing it because I didn't wash my plant. I just put it in my mouth. And um, <laughs> But this yeah, designer, that's what designer I dirt. And that we had a good time. We had a really good time. And I just remember, because you had, maybe, you hadn't had your last kid then? You still no, had, no, no. No, right? No. And, and I, I, rem- 
And I remember you had two little kids with you, also with handmade shoes, who were so, they just looked so free. And um, it was just such a stark contrast to, you know, how a lot of people raise their kids in an urban environment. And I was like, these kids are free. And this woman knows how to raise free children. And that was something even back then that I was just so, um, it was almost magnetic. And I was like, it would be so cool if we get to hang out more and I get to meet her again. And I met you again in yes. years after. And then the last time I met you, we were at a barefoot uh, festival. That's in, right. In, um, gosh, where? Hildersum. Hild Hildersum. Yeah. In, uh, in, in Belgium? No, no, the no. Netherlands? It was in the middle of Holland. It was in this, yeah. this crazy uh, gym. Yeah. So it was like, why don't we do it outside, please? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was the start of the festival. Yeah, but we were there and there was a guy who was doing uh, foot readings, I remember. <laughs> like, you could give him five euro and who could, he could read your character just looking at your feet. And that's where I saw you last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He'd probably read my feet and say, they're so dirty. <laughs> you talk a lot outside. You're an outside yeah, no. person. <laughs> <laughs> you love nature. <laughs> More and more. I used to be a big nerd, though, you know, reading books, just only liking things that people made. Like, I couldn't, I was very, very disconnected, but also feeling it. And then, you know, starting to wonder and then got hooked. And now, yeah, yeah, yeah I know I'm nature, as That's you are. Yeah, beautiful. So tell us a little bit about who you are who you are in the Netherlands, who you are in the world, who you are in your family, because uh, I can't really read a bio for somebody like you. Yeah, well, so how many hours do we have now? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I'm Dan Timmers, and I actually live, you wouldn't imagine it, but downtown Amsterdam. It can't be more downtown. Um, we are looking forward to a move because uh, raising three children downtown Amsterdam it is possible, but not in the way we would like it. Um, but we homeschool our children, uh, which is not that common in Holland. Um, but we do it anyway. And uh, so we travel a lot. We take our kids out a lot. Um, um, we live on a historical uh, sailing ship. Um, so we sail a lot. Uh, it's big. It's our house. We don't have a regular house. At this moment, we're also uh, restoring an old 70-year-old uh, gypsy wagon we bought with a tractor. So because I wanted more to be on land, and uh, well, that's nearly finished. So then we'll travel with that with our kids. Um, I run with my partner. We run a, a, a yoga school. I started with yoga. At this moment... Um, I teach more as you do, like natural movement, ancestral movement, uh, because it just resonates more with me than just being on that rubber mat. Mm -hmm. And um, I also started for Wildernis, which is a place for now we start with children where, well, for Wildernis means rewilding, it's in Dutch and uh, everything I know and what I think is good to connect kids with nature, um, I teach them in a paleolithic style. So they actually, um, they can like fish hides really in the middle of the forest. You know, I, I prepare everything that they do it and they do really cool things. They don't even know they do that, that it's so cool what they do. But um, it's fascinating to see how quickly they pick it up. So that's sort of what gets me out of bed in the morning to spread and share the the love and for all these ancient skills that almost get lost and ancient movement too it's great yeah. it's so beautiful and so right now we're speaking um this, it's april 2nd today for those of you who still know what date and what day of the year it is uh so we all seem a little lost these days and and don you moved your your ship from downtown amsterdam at the nemo nemo museum right yeah, right. I've actually, that's, that's our neighbor. That's like 20 meters. Yeah, so I, I've actually seen where your boat is and seen your boat when yeah. I went to the museum. Um, and our friend Nina, um, who we dearly love, was like, this is Dan's boat. So I've actually <laughs> seen where yeah. you live downtown Amsterdam. But um, now you've moved it to um, 
sort of the magical woods north in a little canal. So yeah, it's it's not a it's not an ancient wood, so it's not like you have in the states, you know, like with ah uh, thousand year old trees. No, it's very young, but it's it's wild. They don't do anything about it, which makes it fascinating and it nice. attracts a lot of uh, animals. Uh, so they made this little canal in it. It's then over. It's close to. Uh, it's it's very north of Holland, and um, well, we just we thought you know if there's going to be a lockdown we 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 need to stay wild because otherwise we, it's either wild or crazy i think yeah so we decided mm -hmm. with our kids let's go and uh, it was pretty uh, heavy wind actually so we really raced over uh, the lake um, just to get here and uh, yeah we're here now uh, in the middle of the forest and um, yeah it's magical what it does to us you know um, we we get out so much more while we already do that and and we hear the birds and we learn and we forage every day you know when i cook i'm like tell the kids you know go get some nettles we're going to eat pancakes with nettles and or get this or get that and um uh just to to have them live it more and and they just they just do it, you know, they don't even like, what's that crazy idea? They're more like, not again, nettles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I've been following you on uh, on Facebook and, and seeing some of the beautiful pictures that you've been posting with things that you find that you make, you make uh, pancakes with and pie with. And it's just so cool to see. We, the original reason we invited you is for you to talk about your paleo expedition and nobody yeah. expected that you know we'd be talking in this time where you're doing um this other expedition which is to you know get away from the possibility of lockdown which yeah. amsterdam is not on right no holland they have another they're pretty restricted in your movement but they leave it to the people and i think actually we're doing pretty good good excellent um, so there's not a lockdown but there's a stay distance uh from each other um yeah i i think it it works well so far we, i mean we don't know you know we're all learning in this from yeah. each other and we'll see how holland is doing and how italy and the states are doing or uh, asia is doing um but so far uh, yeah we're doing okay good that's good that's very hopeful to hear um very extreme restrictions stress people out so much i was talking yeah and you don't know what's going to happen if everybody's like okay guys we're up let's go outside and it gets back you know so yeah. maybe that's that's how they do it in holland to to uh, let it continue at a slow pace mm -hmm. and see what what's happening with that mm -hmm. i was sp speaking to one of our colleagues or uh, one of our restorative exercise colleagues in south africa yesterday mm -hmm. and um rika she's lovely she was talking about sweeping the top of her the roof of her house so she could sit on the roof of her house and get some see in the distance because they're not yeah. allowed to leave property right like yeah. that's that's rough that's yeah. super rough. We we can roam around and we our lake is still open. We can still walk around our lake, which is lovely. Yeah. I mean, you live in a pretty uh, fantastic area, of course, as well. And um, um, yeah, I, I feel really uh, thankful that we're still able to, to move. And that's what our plan was, of course. Like, if there would be a lockdown, we're in the middle of nowhere. No one can see us. I mean, we're still isolated. We can still go outside. Um, and that was our main goal for us and the kids. Yeah. Are there other boats in that little canal? No, nobody. Wow, that's amazing. There yeah. should be a movie about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. So, so tell us about the paleo expedition, uh, the idea for it, how long it took you to prepare. Why would you do something so hard and apparently so um, smelly? <laughs> um, so tell us, tell us all about it. Um, so what I, what I, I told you, you know, I was like, uh, years ago, just missing something in life as in, you know, I was doing really well, you know, teaching go well, everything well, but this, this feeling of, of disconnection and I have a family and we do good and, and it's nice, but like, uh, sort of 
you know, I know I'm part of the whole, but what's the whole actually? So, so I was looking for that and I just started foraging. And I mean, really, if people, people are often put off of foraging because they think it's scary or um, they, they get poison or whatever. But you can learn by just doing, you know, everybody can get a necklace. You know, and if you start with that <laughs> and then you're like, hmm, constantly I see something next to it. What could that be? You go home and you check it out and you're like, oh, that's great. That's edible as well. And then, you know, two plants. And and so that's how it happened to me. And I would just ask and 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 do stuff I, with the nettle. I've made so many like soups and pancakes and chips and the, I would just go on and continue with that. But then I was like, well, there must be more. And there's this really cool um, um, uh, teachings here. It's, it's living by nature. And that's where I did a year training. And, and they're quite special. In, in they prepare you for a whole, in a whole year with a group how to um, get ready to do an expedition. So I've, I've learned so much i've learned about i mean it's really it's it's about thinking um what what do you need to be alone and and outside in nature without gear that's made for you you need to make everything yourself and then you think okay i need clothes okay so you need material fabric you need a needle how are you going to do that bone uh you need thread how are you going to do that uh, fibers or um and then you start thinking about that and that's that's really overwhelming so it's really nice if someone <laughs> can help you out with that like okay this is where you find this and then slowly every month we would get together for three days and we would already camp in in nature and um uh, i would start learning it the great thing is um i could bring my kids um so they thought it was their school so there, in some things, they're better than me because I don't know. They just pick it up naturally. So, so and, let me interrupt. So, you, so you were sorry. getting prepared. Yeah. Like you were learn, spending time <clears throat> learning to get prepared for a time without any modern convenience. Yes. Right. And how long was this time going to be? Oh, uh, I spent uh, twelve days in the forest. Where and you without... just went. So drop like kind of like like that yeah. show naked and afraid you kind of just get dropped off with nothing well i i have never seen the show i don't have a tv but it's like <laughs> i don't have nothing but everything i have is handmade okay so you went out there with so stuff you had already prepared like already made yeah okay. yeah i okay, made okay. i already made stuff yeah okay, so we great. we took our time to prepare it like um clothing we we you know you just get um uh, deer hide and you, I have this great butcher that you, you know, just I get them. anything. <laughs> and it's like, he's like, I got, I got some, some uh, hair for you. Or I just, I thought you would like it. I put it in the freezer and then he just brings it along and I start tanning it, getting all the blood off and the, ah, uh, and it, yeah, that's kind of a, it's a dirty job, but I, if you know what you're making, it also is respectful, you know, like he would throw it away. And right. I'm using it and I'm making clothes out of this. So, and these are clothes I can just leave in nature and no harm done. Mm. Except a broken heart for all the hours that are in there. Yeah. You know, so I learned to, to tan buckskin I, uh, with fur on and fur off. I learned how to felt wool. I learned how to sew clothes. Uh, I already knew how to make the shoes because uh, we have our own um, brand in that. I made a blanket of our, our yeah, um, two by three meters. So that's that's huge to to do felting. Um, yeah, yeah, that's great. That's a ten thousand dollar blanket. For those of you who want to do the math, that's a ten thousand dollar blanket. Oh, no. oh, sure, sure. <laughs> two per, uh, two people all day, two days long, just going. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, more soap, more water. I'll oh, rinse it off. Try to put it. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. But you make your own stuff, and and so you learn that. But also the basic skills. You know, how are you making a fire? 
a fire with friction because you're not supposed to take anything. So you need to see what kind of wood am I going to use? Is it dead? How am I going to break it? How am I going to uh, cut it into the right pieces? Uh, making a bow, get the technique right. Um, uh, you cannot there. bring any. <laughs> yeah. So that's we, we really. I, I was I was doing it today because I I I don't know I, I'm I can do it, but I want to be really good at it. So I'm I'm working more and more, and I thought this is my cardio, you know. It, <laughs> You get sweaty from doing that. Yeah, we spent also, about three hours trying and could never get it going. So yeah, but mostly that is, you know, just it's technique. Yeah, yeah. You really, you know, if you get the hang of it. You, I know our, our guides. It took them five minutes. Like we spent. Yeah. We had fifteen people in little groups trying to do it for three hours, and we none of us did it. One of the one of us made smoke <laughs> once. Yeah. But yeah, then yeah, the yeah. guides went, okay, and now we'll show you how to do it. And then there's just like five minutes. They're like, oh, here's a fire. I'm like, all right, jerks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like having the fire, then you have your coal and like, is your nest good? Are you putting in the coal and out? You're like, oh, and then you have to start over again. Uh, but also, you know, we're so used to knife, but you can only use flint because there was no steel in the Paleolithic time. So you have your special, I mean, it's funny, you know, everybody would have their special pieces of flint. Like that's mine because do you see this point here? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's really good for this. And it, yeah, it's totally nerdy, but it's really nice. <laughs> um, we made ropes. Uh, we used bladders from uh, pigs um, and uh, uh, cow for water containers. Um, Mmm, so it tasted delicious. No, no, no. I mean, you tan it. it it's really oh, okay. clean. I mean, seriously, it's it's. Uh, I'll get you yeah, one in in Bulgaria. We have those. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's amazing. So you spent Dan, you spent a year making everything you'd need. Well, actually, one and a half year, because <sighs> yeah, because because you know, it's not like in a in a. A, uh, a month you have your uh, your skins ready no it's it's a lot of skins and you need to clean them tan them soften them smoke them you know it's a lot of work amazingly that was the most work we had wow. um, so yeah so we we were with the training we were done in December and then in September end of August September we went mm. yeah and you went to was it Sweden do yeah, have that right? yeah, yeah, Sweden, uh, yeah, in a national forest, um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And the pictures With, are breathtaking. I know, I know, and and um, I don't know if you've ever experienced it, but have you ever swam in water that you could drink? I don't know, I don't think so. Well, neither had I. You know, I'd never experienced it. And it's like, then you start thinking, you know, like, how crazy is it that you cannot drink the water? I mean, you also need to, you know, with, with the beavers, um, that you get the, the beaver bacteria. Okay, but that's, that's like one animal. But most, most water is just so polluted. But yeah. there, I could swim and drink it at the same time. And that felt so um, empowering, so how do you call it, rejuvenating? Or uh -huh. yeah, yeah, it 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 was it was delicious. It was a bit sweet, and yeah, that was kind of an experience on its own. Like swim in the water you can drink. Hmm. So it was that beautiful, that clean. That sounds so moving. Like I think it would be yeah. hard not to cry multiple times a day just from the experience. for a variety of reasons <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you prepared for a year yeah and what was it like even like arriving like the first day like here we are we're doing this in your you're dressed in these paleolithic clothes you have the the, the bladder to hold the water in yeah well, you feel really excited and also incredibly nervous. 
because you've worked towards that time and then it's happening and you're walking there and you zoom out and you think i look so cool <laughs> and then you also think i hope this is sufficient because really to do an expedition you need to do an expedition to do an expedition actually i mean in the expedition you learn like my clothes look pretty cool but I would totally make it different now because sometimes I was really cold. I was like, that's cool pants, but maybe I should make it a bit longer. Um, it's not, yeah, about, the, it's so not about the fashion. It's, you know, it's no, about the function. I, right? I am, you know, I live in Amsterdam. You, you, you pick up something of this. And, and um, yeah, so now I would do it totally different. Um, so, so you go in there and you're really excited and then you come to the place, you think, okay, so this is where we're going to build our hut. And then it's like, okay, we were nine people. So that's, that was, it was great because you had so many hands, but also difficult because you're with so many people. Um, and then we had to build a hut. How are we going to build a hut? Where are we going to build a hut? Is this the right place to do it? And then you start and some people are really good at it so you you yeah you leave it to them and then later you think oh maybe i would have done it differently uh, but that's only reflecting on what was already there of course you know you learn by doing things in the end <laughs> we made a hut that was so huge you could play <laughs> hide and seek in there um, which was actually not that smart because it was cold we, I mean, trees went through that fire day <laughs> and night. Now, not during the day. We kept it small, but just continue because people were cold. And, and we should have made it a lot smaller, you know, just to crawl in, sleep, and get out. But for us, you could just stand up, hang your stuff. And, uh, so that, that's a learning thing, you know. You just learn it by knowing it. Um, and then, you know, I was cold for two nights, and then I thought, what am I going to do? But I was with a, with a really great friend who I run for wilderness with. And I was like, you know, I think it's time we go into the cuddling stage. <laughs> so, you know, we, 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 we um, shared our blankets and, and uh, she's, she has such soft skin. So I just whoop, <laughs> crawled next to her and I thought, oh, that's actually really great. I mean, I don't lay with women that often. Um, um, and then we were warm. But, yeah. you know, and that's something a lot of cultures do. If you're cold, you you hook up. But yeah. uh, in Holland, we don't really do that. So I know that there were also guys, they just didn't make it to that stage to say, oh, you know, <laughs> we're just going to enjoy ourselves and whoop, <laughs> cuddle. Um, but I was warm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get challenged in so many ways. It's so out of your convenience. Um, and, you know, you make decisions constantly. I'm going to do this or not. And uh, it was nice. How many people were with you? Nine. So uh, eight. I was, uh, I was, uh, we were together with nine. And that was uh, six guys and three women. Yeah. I would imagine that guys would be more attracted to the, the that kind of a thing. You know, it just seems uh, so, so like doable. I feel like more doable, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but still, to be honest, it's it's you know doing this it's really um it's a journey with yourself mm -hmm. really you run into things you would have never imagined and i must say that uh um, everybody's done like a really fantastic job but n not you know everybody runs into their to their um I wouldn't say weak spot because that would make it weak. It's just their challenges. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets them, definitely. Even the toughest guys. Um, yeah, there was a lot of detoxing going on. Uh, you, you're hungry. You're hungry constantly. I mean, we had little food with us that we made, like um, pemmican. It's uh, um, kidney fat uh, with some nuts in it and... Uh, uh, food leather and a bit of beef jerky but 900 grams for 12 days so that's 75 grams a day that's nothing especially two, when and, you all two and a half ounces yeah not a lot 
so it's really i mean it's like fills up your tooth and then you're done <laughs> Uh, so that does something to you if you're doing really hard work and make long expeditions to try to go fishing and then you don't catch a thing because you can have all your materials ready. But if you've never hunted, I mean, it's, it's, I wouldn't call it a sport, but it's a lifestyle hunting. And then you realize you don't know anything about the animals, really. So where do they hide? When should I go after them? Uh, I've tried fishing and we had this huge net we made. We didn't catch a guppy, nothing. So in 12 days. In 12 days. And really, really, we made an effort. But Could we you did catch um, um, mussels, sweet oh, mussels. Oh, nice. Yeah, but they don't taste nice, really. <laughs> it's not like the mussels you get from the sea. This is sweet water mussels. So it's like it's like uh, sort of a jelly dirt, what you eat. Oh. But it fills, you know, has protein. So, uh, yeah. How big are they? Happy. They're much smaller than. Uh, no, about the same size. Maybe. Oh. Yeah, they're like, yeah, they're big. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, how, good muscle, normal muscle. How interesting. I don't know that I've ever had sweet muscles. Well, I now understand yeah, I why, because they, they don't taste I that don't good. Know. I don't see any point why you should. Could you see fish, but you just couldn't catch them or there were no fish? No, we didn't see any fish either. But we know there was fish. There was oh. fish there, but mm. ah, we just didn't get it. And we made hooks, you know, from bone and um, uh, roots and, and wood. And, and we used them, but then we found out, ah, oh, most of the hooks are too big. And I had some small hooks that were all right, but, you know, I don't know, the the worms just kept hanging on there. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they were like, ah, not good enough. I don't know. Maybe you should have used some of those mussels for bait. <laughs> yeah, we did that too. Yeah. Um, and we had the inside of frogs we used. So, you know, in the end, it was better to just eat the bait <laughs> because then at least you, I mean, you can eat worms, you can eat eggs, you can, eat, yeah, so just eat that then. Yeah. Did you eat frogs? Uh, no, because we used them, um, but, uh, you know, looking back, I would have. Next time, I would. Hi, Roland here with a brief interruption to tell you about the Eat, Move, Live 365 community. Kalina and I have been hosting our fun and thriving membership community since 2017, and we'd love to have you as our next member. The Eat, Move, Live 365 community is filled with like-minded people, just like you, ready to share tips, have fun, and give each other the support we all need to live our best lives. We've got monthly recipes, mindfulness practices, and exercises, and mobility programs that you can do right at home without any equipment. You are going to love how great simple habits, spirited motivation, and a warm community can make you feel. Head over to eatmovelive365.com right now and check it out. EatMoveLive365.com. See you there. Yeah, I uh, I have a, a couple of paragraphs uh, from like food that you listed on your um, Facebook yeah. diary. Yeah. And uh, is it okay if I read them? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. So, so here is what you say about day eight. The abundance of fungi was amazing. We almost tripped over them. There were berries too, blackberries, red berries, and cranberries. For the sweet ones, we had to make more effort collecting for hours. It felt like meditation. Even though one day I was soaking wet from the rain, I knew there would be fire at home. We also found sweet water mussels. Nah, I would not recommend them, but for <laughs> us, that was a nice food change when roasted and it gave us good protein. Here's what we ate on the expedition. Various bullets. Um, chanterelles, birch fungi, poplar fungus, cornucopia, and piedumon. Is that how piedumuton? Uh, piedumuton. Piedumuton. What is piedumuton? Yeah. yeah um, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, Landfoot. Oh. Well, I have one that has to like a. Uh, is um, is it orange? Yeah. Yeah, it's a duck. Du it's um. Oh, it's in Bulgarian. It's duck foot. I have no idea what it's oh. in English. Yeah. We'll find it. Baked in uh, pemmican, in soup, grilled to crisps. Um, 
kilos and kilos of fungi crisps. Rose hip nettle, water mint, raspberries, blueberries, cowberries, cranberries, lily roots, rowan berries, blackberry leaf chips. I think. Plantain stalks, woodpeckers. Woodpeckers? Like the, the animals? No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, you wood, wish. Wood sorrel, <laughs> yeah. cattail roots, freshwater mussels, <laughs> ant eggs. I want to hear about those. Mealworms and one wild strawberry. Yeah, really one. <laughs> I found it. So I ate it. And then I thought, okay, you know, you eat something and then you collect for the group. Yeah. But I just far on and I had I had like eaten it like, well, let's taste it. And then I didn't find any more. But it was wow, that was like wow. Like you get cake in the middle of the Oh the in your defense, cutting it into nine pieces would have been <laughs> very <laughs> unsatisfying yeah so but we I, did do that with the raspberries you know each one we really shared yeah. like if we found something nice we shared it and that was really uh, that was really nice to do so where did you get the ant eggs in like in an, an ant hill yeah yeah um uh we got that that several times and once we just you know we walked and knocked it not well we didn't knock the hill over but uh, we got a piece of it, and then there were eggs. We were like, okay, well, they're ours. So we took them and ate them. And it's, yeah, it's just nothing, you know. It's like so small. But, you know, it's just, um, I'm also very curious. You know, if, if there's something edible that looks disgusting, I will definitely try it. I just want to see what it is. Um, uh, so this one was also something that was new for me, and I thought, oh, let's eat it. And, nothing how did your stomach and digestion do eating things like ant eggs and mealworms and so much mushrooms um uh actually i had stool every day which i thought was amazing because that wasn't much going in uh, but i also had my period right there oh. so, you know that i think the contractions also you know came along with it and just remind me, I have something really nice to talk to say about that. But um, having paleolithic period, uh, but but um, um, yeah. So the, my digestion was fine. It was just uh, I was just hungry all the time, and I'm a big eater, and I eat so much fat. But really, you know, if there's ever anyone listening has confusion, should I eat fat or not? It's like. Yes, you should. You definitely, definitely should. That was all we were dreaming of. I mean, we were talking about food for hours and it was all fatty stuff. And that's what I did. When I was done, I took a half a liter of uh, whipped cream and I just drank it. I was like, oh, you know, that, <laughs> and that and eggs, that's what I wanted. You know, mm -hmm. that was my craving. Um, I also went in with breast, I was still breastfeeding. Oh. So, um, um, which actually just continued. Huh? It's amazing how your body works. I was so skinny, really so skinny, but yeah, it still kept producing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I didn't notice much. Uh, I know that some friends though, um, who were, who were with me, um, uh, th it took them more time. And they just, you know, had to really sit and then, you know, build a brick and that was it. So they, mm -hmm. they took them longer to get a good stool. But um, yeah, I think people were right with that. Yeah, because fat is such a big component of, of bowel movements. And it's just so interesting because that was a, a very low fat diet other than what you brought in with the kidney fat. Yeah, and there were people who were in our group and they were like, oh, we just have a lot of... Um, beef jerky and they they couldn't get the kitty fat which is not that easy to get you know it's not a common food anymore while actually the native americans they used it and the colonists also they used it a lot you know and it's it's really nice and, and, and it keeps forever so um but uh they didn't bother making it but they really regretted that in the end so but uh we could share because people had still left over so we shared um so they would still have the fat but that was that was a mistake really not mm -hmm. bringing that and that's why you learn huh? it's like wow i didn't know it was that important but it, it is very important mm -hmm. 
Tell us about the periods. Yeah, that was amazing. Paleo was like, okay. periods, not so popular with the paleo community as we know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, well yeah. <laughs> so, so I thought, you know, that um, um, I had, I calculated it and, and, and it should have been right before. But of course, when you're nervous and, and I already started um, uh, slowing down, uh, no more coffees, no more sugar, just to, you know, detox a bit before instead of being very grumpy there. Um, and maybe that, that sort of changed it. But on the first day we were building the hut, I was like, oh, I feel something. Okay, that's my period. And then I knew about um, uh, a thing. How do you call it? Um, moss. It's like a moss that grows in the water. Um, and um, that, that it's, it's, it just takes up so much uh liquid oh. so i and it was there so i've uh spagnum it's called mm. so um i uh, uh i collected that uh, dried it and you know in, in the first day i didn't have anything just shoved it between my legs like okay well let's see and it was amazing it's like wow uh, <laughs> this feels really good so but then i made something that looks like a pad and i just uh from wool and i put it in there and um well it was it was it worked better than anything i had at home oh my so god i thought wow this is so good and then it just it it just felt also so good to use something from nature and give it back yeah with you know a lot of uh iron and and <laughs> minerals and 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 um so I, th I, I brought a loads of that stuff back home because I thought I want to inspire women to, to, to try it because it feels so good to have something that's straight out of nature and you can bring it back to nature. So oh. yeah, that was really good. That's so cool. I'll, I'll send you a bunch. You can try it out. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. You want some so too, Ronald? Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you can try <laughs> For my underarms to keep myself dry. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so, no coffee. Talk talk to us about the modern addictions. Like no coffee, no. Like you don't have a TV, but like I'm sure other people watch TV. Yeah, um, yeah. No Wi-Fi. No 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 phones. No internet. Like no none of the modern things. How was that? Uh. Well, actually, I think what made the most um, impression on this was no time. That we didn't have a clock. Mm. You know, mm. no Wi-Fi. Well, you know, that that's okay. We did bring uh, two cameras because we wanted to take pictures to, you know, write, write about it. But we really made an agreement about it that it wouldn't be out there constantly. We hid it. And then we took it, take some pictures and hit it again. So it, it wasn't a constant thing in our, because uh, that was the only modern thing we had. Um, but not having a, well, not having coffee. Yeah, some people had headaches. Some people uh, were really tired, which of course is, is logical. You know, if that keeps you running, then, uh, and you don't have it anymore, you just break down. So um, that happened. Uh, also lack of sugar. Um, yeah, that made a big impact on people. And for me, as my personal uh, experience in this, I noticed um, I don't eat that much sugar at all. I mean, we don't have sugar in the house. Um, but, you know, I eat figs and dates and th those kind of things sometimes. And yeah, if, so if someone bakes a great cake, of course, I'm, I'm really am going to eat it. But um, that's more like a special thing. So for me, uh, not having that, um, it, it was more difficult in the days before the expedition when I was busy and still in my modern life mm -hmm. not to have it than there. Mm -hmm. But time, that was a different thing. You wake up and you're like, what time will it be? You know, and, and um, uh, it's like, yeah, sh shall we start cooking, cooking dinner? Or having our uh, mushroom feast again after 11 days you're like what for dinner mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 
so uh yeah so that that, that is the the sense of not knowing about time um it gets better after days that you you can see it by the shadows and but still um uh, you listen more to your body you know you you take your naps because well you know the, the tasks have been done we have wood we have plenty of mushrooms plenty of berries let's have a nap um so yeah that was i think the most um uh well, not difficult but challenging thing to not have time we had actually and then we had all the time in the world because we didn't have time. Mm. Yeah. That's such a good lesson. So you were out in this national park, right? National forest. Yeah. Did anybody stumble upon you, like hikers or anything yeah. like that? <laughs> that yeah. must have been quite a surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was someone in the background, our teacher, Simon Abswoude, who's, who's the, uh, he runs uh, Living by Nature, and he was there. You know, in case of emergency, um, um, fire or, you know, uh, someone getting sick or someone getting really hurt. So we had someone who was close by and he had run into walkers and they'd seen our hut. So and he asked, can, can they come and have a look? And we were like, we talked about it. It's like, yeah, why not? You know, so they came in. And then you sit there, and that's like you're in the TV show. <laughs> you feel like uh, so. So that was uh, that was once, and that was enough. Um, but yeah, that's that. Then you realize what you're doing, and uh, yeah, that looks kind of freaky. Which of course we are. I mean, who's going to live Stone Age if it's not necessary? But uh, yeah, that was kind of weird. Wow. I can just imagine, like, you know, just going for for our hike up here in the in the national park and <laughs> and stumbling upon, you know, a bunch of people who made their own clothes and um, who are there with making their mushroom dinner. Um, it would just be so surreal, almost yeah. like a time machine, like you like you sure. went in a time machine into the past. Sure, definitely. Which you, which you did which you did um yeah. i'm really curious you know as a fellow movement teacher natural movement ancestral movement teacher how do you how did you feel your body shaped by the experience um well i'm really grateful to to be a movement teacher and to have been trained by katie uh katie bowman because um yeah that years of practicing this has yeah it's 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 been great you know um so uh it, it that also felt like uh, preparing for this trip mm -hmm. you know i i can just do all the movements squats go into trees and you know actually i found out there that i was the oldest one i was like oh god i'm i'm 45 and i hadn't realized it that, that i was like the the tribe's elder <laughs> but i didn't feel like it because i feel so fit so that 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 was talk about challenges you know that's like oh right i'm the oldest one here uh, <laughs> when did that I, happen <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right you're like oh i am um so but i i you know constantly living the way i do uh jumping on and off the the um, uh, the boat, uh, having uh, ladders in the house to hang and and hang while I cook and 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 climb trees with my kids and and walk 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 a lot. It really prepared me, and um, so I also took up the challenge of going barefoot. And then people who'd been on on expeditions, they told me that's impossible because uh, you have no idea how this uh, ground is. And I was like, oh yeah, sure. And I really had no idea. And then I came there, I was like, oh, that's another leak. You're right. You know, because it's, it's, it's moss, but underneath there's a whole lot of sticks and stuff. And it's, it's hard walking, really hard. So I wanted to give it a try anyway. And luckily I already walked barefoot the whole summer. 
so there was uh, more cushioning and um, uh, so I, I did it and I managed the whole 12 days but at the end of course there were holes in my feet that I thought wow well, I, I could use some rest um, but it changed the way I walk because you even though you walk fast first you feel and then you put your you you um, divide your weight over so it made it made me feel very aware of my uh, feet and also I could really see my feet thriving from from this um, grounding really literally their health um, they were just very happy mm. you know I could really I could really see it and and feel it and um, yeah that was that was an experience on its own just walking barefoot the whole time that's amazing I didn't know that you did that I imagined you wore one of your shoes that you make but no. yeah I tried but then I, I was mm, I, I don't know it just didn't feel comfortable <gasps> so uh, I thought oh I'll just wear them when I need them and then well that was the end and I didn't wear them <laughs> that's amazing that's awesome that's amazing um Gosh, I have so many questions about like transitioning. Do you want to ask that like question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, after after this experience, you know, twelve days away from all these modern conveniences, like what was your experience coming back? Like, what was the biggest surprise? Like, how did it change your experience? How does it change your life afterward? Um. Well, actually, we. <laughs> We, uh, Nula, my friend and I, we were driving back, which was a 15 hour drive back to, to Amsterdam. And um, um, we got a sort of gift of life um, because we were driving back and then in the morning very early um, to catch the ferry in Denmark. And then we hit a moose. So yeah, that was amazing. But it, it got his, his, his bump in the window and jumped over i don't know so the hood of the car was all right just the window was totally smashed but still in place and that was like oh my god sunday morning in denmark in the middle of nowhere what was that that was a moose so just for your information we've been looking for moose our whole expedition we didn't see one we go home we hit one so apparently those moose get drunk from the apples that yeah. they eat and then it starts to um, become alcohol in their stomachs and they do weird things. So it just walked and then it stopped and then we hit it. And um, so we were all right. And then um, we got one more day and we just went to a bed and breakfast, got our, our car in the, in the garage and uh, that was it. So we're like, what are we gonna do? I mean, so the moose, the moose was fine. The moose left. The moose was fine. Yeah, okay. moose was fine. A hunter had tracked it down. It was fine. So I called my partner and I said, "We're stuck. I hit my, I hit a moose." And he was like, "So this is going to be your biggest challenge. Can you still relax?" So I was like, "Oh, you know <laughs> so well. You know, I was like, okay, let's go back home." And so then we got an extra day to slow down and yeah. and digest our experience and. Um, so that was really, really nice to do that. And um, what I noticed is, um, well, this, this feeling of connectedness and this strange feeling of being inside a house with all goodies, you know, it's, it's like you switch on the light. So there's light. We didn't have light except from the fire. And if you, if you drop something at night, then, well, we had to get a ma like a, a stick and, and see if we could make a torch of of of, um, uh, of 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 wood and look for it. Otherwise, well, that's tomorrow. And and that is that is something you realize when you stop back into modern society. Um, also, it it um, I really had trouble eating coming back. Mm. I can totally relate to people who've been into war or to uh, starvation because that's what it felt at the end it's like oh you know if i 
I'm not going to survive this if, if things don't change. You know, I had a little food. I had the mushrooms, but it was not enough. I noticed that in my body. And um, so I came home and then my body just wanted food, food, food. And I started eating and then, you know, I was done eating and then I would just start all over again. So it's like, you know, when people go on really crash diets and mm -hmm. then, you know, they overeat and that happened to the whole group. Everybody gained weight more than when they left. Yeah. Um, and it took weeks to, to balance it out. Yeah. So that was, uh, yeah, my, my head and my body were in another league. You know, I was like having a, um, discussions with myself about it, like, oh, no, <laughs> I've, I've had enough. Eat. Because you realize also you don't need so much food. I am absolutely positively certain if you have one good meal a day, I mean, and then I mean a good meal, you know, full plate, one a day, that's enough. I'm sure of it. But, you know, we eat so much for comfort and to deal with all our emotions and ah, our, our challenges in life. But there, you know, if you had your challenge, like, okay, you know, you wanted to eat it away, what are you going to do? Like after day four, pemmican, yeah, it's nice, but <laughs> you, you just eat because you know your body needs it. Mm. Yeah. But it doesn't uh, fulfill the, the comfort what you get from food when you have that kind of food. I mean, a mushroom is really not going to do it. We didn't have any salt either, by the way. And that mm. is, is also something uh, big. So, you know, I think a lick of salt would have done something good too, but we didn't have that. So, uh, yeah, the comfort of food um i think it's a huge thing in our society like where we can yeah i think we can learn so much more but of course that's your business huh? so um you know all about that yeah that's amazing and it's so comforting to hear that your bodies did the right thing from a survival perspective this is exactly sure. what should have happened and sure. just to know that that's that's still working on the inside and and working working well you spoke a little bit about comfort and emotions and kind of like my last question to you, because we could talk for hours. I know. Is, I love it. What was the, <laughs> yeah. What was the effect on your mental health, your mental health, the group's mental health? Like how was stress there? How was stress when you came back? Or like, you know, how most of us live with a little anxiety or depression just as a part of our normal life. Yeah. How was that there and after? Um, well, there, I think we had trouble as a group being a whole group because I, and I don't know if it's the person, uh, the, the people there or the size of the group. I mean, nine people, it's a big group. So um, I know some people um, felt left out, but also moved out a bit, you know, like uh, the, what I said in the beginning, everybody, uh, you take yourself along in this trip and and so you also have to deal with your own things mm -hmm. and i think each of us had um uh had their challenges in that i certainly had with um uh there was also a lot of ambition in our group to go hunting but if you if you would actually zoom out and take the perspective that then energy wise our hunting um uh cost so many calories which absolutely didn't come back so but then there's still the ambition of trying and you know um getting excited about it um <clears throat> and i i wanted to go with the ambition so and i like the excitement but i realized i walked away from my own needs cuz i was constantly uh, um, working with food or, or trying to get food in, you know, collecting berries and this and leaves. And, and, and then I realized like, oh, this is also a time out of the life I normally have with my three kids and, and partner, which I am the one who cooks most. And I'm constantly doing that. I'm, I'm still in my role. So mm -hmm. then I took one day off. <laughs> I was like, you know, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm just going on a wander for myself. 
and that's what I did. I, uh, I, I took a coal with me in a, in a cow's horn and I took it with me and then uh, I, I managed to light up a fire um, uh, um, and a plate that I found on my walk and then I just spent there all day just, you know, wandering doing nothing oh yeah i had a fish hook i didn't catch a thing but um you know that kept me busy and just looking at clouds and and that was for me that was the comfort i needed to be by myself and really experience this thing out of the group energy yeah and i got i got i got back really happy after that you know to to also take care of myself in this yeah it's interesting i was um and I, I lead groups and just yesterday we're working with basic needs and one of the basic needs is positive separation. Um, yeah. Just this need to be by yourself. And a couple of the people in the group were like, well, what do you do? Nothing. Like, like nothing. Yeah. But, but I need to be doing something. No, you, you actually don't. That's the, that's the problem is that we we're so overstimulated Sure. that we don't know how to be alone but it's such a basic need that positive separation i want to feel my own energy away from the group because we're you know as humans we're we're social beings we're always feeling the pulse of everyone around us um, yeah. and uh, roland and i do a good job of that in in the house here i feel like we get our own space uh, but it should be completely different on a on an expedition where you're so dependent also on everyone else because like we we are dependent, but not in the same physical way as you were. And to walk away in that situation, I feel like it is even more profound. Yeah, and it was just what I needed. Like, yeah. I was like, it's almost done. And um, how do I feel here yeah. without all the, the arousal around me? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that it, it, yeah, it, it, it really gave me something and really feels like I've gone through a rite of passage with this expedition. There, for me, there's really, it's a start of a whole new way of looking at my life, the world, um, how I want to raise my kids, how I want to uh, give something back to society, um, helping others to connect, feel the connection, empower the connection. So... Yeah, it's just a start. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And um, the survival skills school sounds so amazing. Oh, they um, are really uh, living by nature. You really should look them up. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. the one you started for, for the little ones, the rewilding Yeah, school. that's for wilderness. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, where can people find you? We're going to put links to your websites in the yeah. show notes. Uh, but just tell us where people could find you. Yeah, so the like for the movement, it's uh, uh, yogalab.nl, and for the um, herb skills, and um, that's for wilderness.nl. And now we're still with kids, uh, but we're preparing uh, also um, workshops and and um, uh, inspiration uh, days uh, for adults. But you know, things take time and. I would like to take my time. So that's not on there yet, but it's coming. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That is so cool. We will put links to all of this in the show notes. And cool pictures that mm -hmm. you oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. share so people can see your fashionable pants. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and if, if people like to, to follow, or, and actually it's not just to follow, I try to inspire people with what I do, not to like show off and say, look, there's some Berg sap again. <laughs> but it's like if I can do it, you can do it. You know, it's it's yeah. that easy, really. So I have on Instagram Dan gaat wild. So that's Dan goes wild, but then in Dutch Dan gaat wild, and that's where I put everything. So, and it's in English, so people can uh, can follow yeah. that. I'll well, I'll we add all of those. Definitely link to all of those. Sure, sure. And we'll continue to stalk you on the internet. Oh, um, great. I love it. <laughs> look at all of your wonderful posts on Facebook that I get daily and um, in your Instagram account as well. It's been such a treasure to have you, Don. Thank you. Yeah, you're Don, so thank you welcome. so much for joining us. It was wonderful. Yes, thank you. It's, um, I'm re-inspired I'm re again. 
see all you have to do is talk about it and um, oh yeah definitely, definitely and it comes alive it comes alive yeah, again yeah sure, and, uh, sure we've barely scratched the surface here but i really hope that our listeners are um inspired by you know just even trying to find metal or um figuring out this river moss period thing or <laughs> you know just even looking Fuck in Fuck. yeah in in their area like are there most people in america don't know what nettles are so we could start with so we could start with dandelions you could start with dandelions yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. make an omelet out of, out of it it's great yeah. yeah so looking looking forward to it and spring is just coming here and i i found a spe so last year we moved to colorado in may and the asparagus was already done, but I know where it is. So I'm going to oh, go get it. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to go get Some it. Wild asparagus. Ah, yeah, sure. oh, can't wait. Yep. Thank you, Don. Thank you. You're very welcome. Are you ready to have the health you deserve? Imagine how you'd feel if you were part of a community that valued healing movement, simple but nutrient dense eating, and a lifestyle that supported your needs. Feels pretty good, right? Well, you don't have to imagine it anymore. The Eat Move Live 365 community is all that and more. It's a thriving community of like-minded people enjoying new themed content every month. Original recipes, whole body movement programs, audiobook chapters, interviews, and exclusive mindfulness practices new each month. Whether your goal is to get healthy or lose weight, get rid of those aches and pains, or chill out with less anxiety, the Eat Move Live 365 community is for you. Head to the show notes or to eatmovelive52.com slash community for a special offer for podcast listeners. Mm -hmm.